Over a thousand people met in Rome this week at FAO to discuss what do we expect from marine and inland fisheries in the 21st century, from academia, from the public sector, from governments, from civil society. How do we reconcile the balance between food production, food security, livelihood security and biodiversity conservation for a future world that we can defend and we can live happily in? My talk was really an overview of uh, what we know about the status of fish stocks and the answer is for roughly half the world's fisheries we have pretty good science and we know uh, the, the status and on average the fish stocks are increasing which is very contrary to sort of the popular narrative that fish stocks are decreasing everywhere. Um, uh, but the places we have good data on fish stocks are, uh, are not a random selection of the world's fisheries. They are dominantly from developed countries uh, or are pretty high-end uh, con countries. Um, and a lot of the countries that, uh, particularly poorer countries and the tropical countries, we don't really know the status of their fish stocks. They don't have the science uh, to uh, assess their current uh, abundance or their trends in abundance. Um, and so, uh, you know, what's clearly the need is to, is to start understanding and managing those fisheries that currently are poorly understood and, and reasonably lightly managed. So uh, my take was to contrast a little bit how we use the data in the industrial fisheries, mainly in the developed world, and to contrast that with the context that we face when we try to do fisheries management in developing countries, especially in small-scale fisheries. There's been a push to uh, develop methods that are able to perform well in data limited situations. But my message is that data limitations come hand in hand with other problems, which have to do with capacity limitations and also some difficulties in trying to enforce regulations. So it's sort of like you have to look at the whole approach and, and try to find out something that will work better in the context of each fishery. Well, I was in the session that was looking at um, how we can improve uh, partnerships between uh, biodiversity and food security. Um, uh, there were people who spoke on uh, the kinds of partnerships that we need for that. There were people who spoke on how we can bring stakeholders together. Uh, there, there were people who spoke on the importance of, of gender uh, in, in this arena. And there was also uh, a person who talked about some of the, um, the types of uh, approaches that are being used currently to try and encourage this partnership between biodiversity and, and food security. For, for us to be able to meet the needs of food security, we have to take biodiversity into consideration because most of the time biodiversity is actually providing the support services for food. But there's a trade-off. Uh, so the main, the main message was what, what, what is that trade-off? Uh, is a trade-off uh, that you need more food security uh, and, and some biodiversity or do you need more biodiversity or, and, and some food security. So it really depends on the country. It's clear that if you uh, don't take care of biodiversity, it's going to be very difficult to meet food security because maybe you can, you can harvest for a while but then after a while it, it's not replenishing itself. I think it is almost the most important thing. Uh, it's hard to actually understand what's happening with a fishery and I think the people that understand the fishery the most are the people out there doing it. So without that piece I, I don't see how it's possible to make policies that are affecting these people's livelihoods without having them involved. Um, and it's been fun for me because there was a couple of talks that I was able to interject and be like you're not thinking about this. Well I think one of the really important uh, benefits of this conference is to bring all that together because there are, there are as I said, there's so many conflicting narratives that, uh, you know, it's really, uh, uh, it's much easier to get publicity about a bad news story than a good news story. So the, the media coverage of fisheries is extremely unbalanced. And uh, this conference gets a chance to really bring people from all perspectives together and say, what do we really know and try to put a stake in the ground and say, look, if you want to understand the status of fisheries, here's a place where, you know, the, the world's experts gathered and, uh, and came to uh, conclusions. 
The participants in this international symposium on fisher sustainability have put together a number of conclusions and recommendations that will be taken forward by the Committee on Fisheries of the FAO and a number of fora in the next year or two to ensure that we build a new narrative of what we expect from oceans, seas and inland waters as we move towards the 21st century to a world of 9 billion people.